Hello everyone, I'm Lai Wei from Zhongshan Autonomic Center in China. So it's my great honor to speak here. Today I'm going to talk about our recent work on the intraocular microbiota and its role in the pathogenesis of AMD. So in the past two decades, we apparently know a lot more about our human body than ever. One important thing is that we know on, in our body, actually, we have a lot of microbes, uh, much more than what we used to know, actually. Thousands of different species, including bacteria, uh, fungi, and uh, viruses, actually live with us together as a, a as an enemy and also as a, a friends. So uh, the collectively the microbiota, especially gut microbiota, actually has been shown to correlate with the health and uh, physiology and the pathology of many, many different conditions in our body, uh, especially uh, for some uh, metabolic problem we used to have. Uh, like obesity, diabetes, uh, the gut microbiota play an important role. Recently, uh, those uh, immune-related diseases like IBD, uh, asthma, they all relate to the gut and uh, the microbiota in other parts of the body, for example, the lung. Uh, especially, the gut microbiota has been shown to regulate disease phenotype in many, many more different conditions, for example, depression, heart disease, uh, even Alzheimer's and Parkinson. So basically, gut microbiota actually correlated with every single pathology in our body. We can say that actually. Uh, in the ocular disease field, actually, we have recently know a lot more than we used to know also. Uh, in 2015, Rachel Caspi group from NH actually uh, has presented a seminal study in the immunity journal actually showing that the UVMS actually is uh, closely regulated by the gut microbiota. Basically, the phenotype of intraocular inflammation, especially retinal retinitis, Actually, it depends on the existence of uh, gut microbiota or microbiota itself. Because if you delete the microbiota by germ free condition, actually the intraocular inflammation is largely gone in the neuron model of uh, experimental autoimmune uveitis. So later in 2018, uh, uh, Pei Zheng Yang's group from uh, Chongqing actually showed a precise patient actually have a very, very specific special microbiome in their gut. Basically, this is very much correlated with the disease onset. And later, uh, Dong Hong Chen's group also showed the IOP and uh, RGC loss in the uh, glaucoma model actually also correlated with the gut microbiota because if you raise those mice in the germ-free condition, those uh, IOP increase or even RGC loss actually also gone because of the microbiota's key role. So other diseases also, uh, for example, AMD. Andrew Taylor's group also showed a diet associated with AMD phenotype, a diet regulated uh, gut microbiota associated with AMD phenotype. So all of those are showing the gut microbiome not only related to other disease, but also very much the ocular disease conditions too. But we know in our gut, there are probably hundred trillion microbiome, the microbes, for example, bacteria, basically. But uh, other uh, organs like uh, uh, the lung, the skin, uh, the uh, urogenital uh, organs also have very much a different level of uh, microbes existing in their organs. But uh, inside of the eye, I mean, the inside of the eye, most people or most of the doctors basically think this is a 
absolutely sterile space because it's closed organ and uh, all the study or no previous study have showing trace of the existence of microbiota. Actually, uh, we are working on the intraocular inflammation uh, question and uh, uh, not like other uh, groups who focus on the, the phenotype of the immune response itself in the uh, during the intraocular inflammation, we are rather focused on our question uh, on the trigger of those intraocular immune response. Basically, those triggers could be a microorganism from outside of the body, or it could be a protein antigen uh, from our own body, like autoantigen. And oh, of course, it could be a chemical, so it could be a lot of different things. But we start with our hypothesis of looking for if there are any microorganisms actually involved in the intraocular inflammatory process. Uh, but before those things, we actually found a very strange thing at the beginning. The case, <laughs> the reason we say this is strange because we didn't expect this either as the other uh, all the fields, uh, the people in the fields, basically. Uh, what we found from very early 10 cataract patients, uh, aqueous humor sample, is that we found some trace of bacteria, especially one bacteria named P. acnes, in those aqueous humor samples. We thought this could be a contamination, it could be something real. So we have to look at uh, more samples. So basically, we go uh, finally for a thousand different cataract patients, aqueous humor samples. And uh, those specimens, all, uh, most of the specimens actually showed a positive for P. acnes, a single bacteria, for the RNA of this bacteria, basically meaning that the bacteria is alive in a aqueous humor. Uh, of course, uh, we have controls, we have other negative uh, thing like as controls to show actually those uh, uh, existence of presence of PFNs RNA in those samples are quite specific. And uh, the next thing we try to do is to look at it by direct visualization. Uh, basically, we get an electron microscope uh, of the fresh non-cultured aqueous humor sample. Uh, basically, we can see the rod, the, the wrong shape uh, bacteria, basically. Uh, no other stuff, but basically bacteria. But one in interesting thing is that some bacteria do have spores, meaning those bacteria actually are not that alive, or say they are not uh, living in a quite a good environment where they have to save themselves by uh, generating spores. So. Uh, and then we try to culture those bacteria. So basically, we try many, many different conditions. Uh, uh, basically, one condition uh, finally gave us some positive result. In, uh, we use a liquid paraffin wax to cover the liquid culture medium. And uh, uh, this medium gave us uh, many, many culture positive samples. So. Uh, Actually, in about 90% of the aqueous humor cultures, we can see the positive result. Uh, like uh, most of those bacteria, culture positive are uh, the, the rod shaped uh, bacteria. And those bacteria actually are uh, P. acnes, are a staff, and, uh, and uh, also some uh, from the gut. So, uh, in average, about 2,700 bacterial clones we can get culture from each aqueous humor sample. So this is quite amazing. It's not a big number, but in most of the aqueous humor, we can have a very, very consistent culture positive bacteria. And those culture bacteria, of course, under electronic uh, microscope, basically, uh, are quite alive. They're doubling and they are uh, quite growing. It's quite different from the fresh uh, aqueous humor bacteria. So 
this is important uh, discovery though. So next, in order to see if those live bacteria are not from the uh, contamination from sampling of aqueous humor, for example, uh, we sampling the aqueous humor, it could, uh, we, we, we have to penetrate the congenital tissue. Basically, uh, some can say uh, those live bacteria could be the congenital uh, contamination, it could be the, the blood contamination, it could be a skin microbiota contamination. So we did a sampling and compared the uh, aqueous humor microbiota with other possible samples contamination from the exactly same patient in a 20 different category patients. And we use a metagenomic sequencing to compare the whole community of the uh, aqueous human microbiota with other tissues, samples, specimen. And uh, very, very important, uh, those samples are, are having uh, both human race and also microbiota race. Uh, we saw the human risk uh, percentage in the aqueous humor is quite low. It's quite low, much lower than the uh, uh, human race from other samples like common type of like uh, uh, serum and the skin samples. Saying aqueous humor sample is different from other, and it's not simply like contamination or direct sample of other tissues. Uh, of course, using the microbial gene as a, uh, as a marker of uh, microbiota composition and function, we can see the aqueous humor sample has the most abundant microbial gene, more than Tanjantaiva, more than the serum, more than the skin communities. Again, using uh, the microbial metabolic pathway as a functional indication of microbial community, you can see aqueous humor have a very unique, specific uh, functional group of uh, uh, genes that is not existed uh, in other tissues. So basically this is a, a saying that the aqueous humor has its own microbiome that is not contamination from other tissues. Of course, uh, using the beta diversity principal component analysis, we see aqueous humor has a specific uh, unique community that is quite different from tissues too. So, in addition to the contamination, possible contamination from the sampling, we also did a comparison of uh, blank uh, reagent controls, different uh, type of uh, negative controls, and those controls are quite different from our real specimen uh, microbiota composition. So basically, this is saying that uh, uh, the intraocular microbiome that we detect from the cataract patient, also here AMD and glaucoma patients, are different from negative controls. Uh, if this is true, is that human is a single species that have intraocular microbiota? Actually, we found no. Other uh, mammalian definitely have a, a similar intraocular microbiota. Here we did again. Managing on sequencing analysis, at looking at uh, rat, rabbit, and the uh, macaque intraocular microbiota, and the pig microbiota. Of course, uh, the pig microbiota is quite different from the, uh, the lab, lab rat, and uh, the lab animals. So, saying uh, actually, we as a mammalian have pretty much all have the microbiota in our eyes. And where and when the microbiota is established is a key question because we know the gut microbiota is pretty much established after uh, we were born, and uh, we using we're using the rat as a animal model to study actually uh, in utero the embryo uh, embryonic stage if there's any intraocular microbiome. Actually, uh, our study didn't detect any. But after the rat was born, basically we can see uh, a, a low level of 
specter in the eye, and then this specter grow and uh, until six months, microbiota became quite stable. So this is quite similar uh, to exactly what the gut microbiome is used to reach in the animal model too, uh, also in the human. So if we accept actually the intraocular microbiota exist, and we, we next question is that uh, if those intraocular micro, intra microbiota is related to the human disease, especially some important ocular disease, and we start with uh, uh, studying three different kind of uh, patients, a cataract patient, an ALD patient, and glaucoma patients. And the intraocular microbiota we detect uh, can actually distinguish those three different type of patients. And uh, of course, the standard index showing uh, the exactly uh, total number of uh, the community uh, Cataract and those three kind of patients showing the cataract glaucoma definitely have a higher number of uh, diversity in their community. But AMD patient, which is having uh, intraocular inflammation, retinal in inflammation, actually has a decrease in Shannon diversity. Uh, this is also uh, consistent with what we expect inflammatory disease may have a lower diversity in their microbiota community. And of course, we should have shown this. Uh, each kind of patient do have a unique microbiota composition that later on actually uh, try to see uh, if this is a possible uh, cause of disease. And so next we focus on AMD, uh, not because, uh, not only because it's the most important uh, disease in our uh, study, but also it's uh, quite a, a clear disease where the inflammation, especially complement uh, uh, dependent inflammation, actually is uh, important in this disease. And we know the Drusen definitely uh, is an early phenotype of AMD, and uh, within the Drusen. Actually, we can see complement activation. We can see Im immunoglobulin. We can see uh, L18, L1 beta mediated inflammasome. So uh, those are uh, what we exactly already know, but we don't know where those uh, actually immune response come from. What's the possible trigger of those immune response? Basically, a hypothesis is uh, a lot. Of uh, metabolites or aging related uh, debris actually trigger those uh, immune response. Uh, actually, we're trying to know if there's other possibility. For example, if there's any possible bacteria in those juicing. Uh Of course, in human, it's hard to get a fresh sample uh, from the uh, a fresh juicing sample actually, from the patients. We start with the spontaneous uh, and model in the monkey. In those uh, relatively old monkeys, uh, we can find those uh, clear uh, spontaneous chosen in their retina, uh, very, very uh, spread out, very, very uh, significant chosens. And under the OCT, actually, we can see clear chosen type of uh, lesion very similar to what we found in the patient, the AMD patient, actually early AMD patient. And in those monkeys, we can get a fresh retinal sample. And this is uh, what we look at after we, we, we actually uh, dissect out the retinal. Basically, you see each yellowish chosen uh, is a, 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 a sort of uh, a very, very uh, liquid uh, lipid type of uh, a drop of uh, lipid, actually. We can say that uh, in each drop of lipid, actually each chosen, under electron microscope, we can see clearly bacteria. And those bacteria are clearly alive. And uh, uh, 
a lot of different uh, type of bacteria, but uh, fundamentally they are alive and uh, they are covered by those lipid, lipid droplets. Uh, by PCR, uh, this is electron microscope, we can visualize the bacteria, but by uh, PCR, we can quantify those bacteria in the juice. And that's when we see a diverse amount of, uh, amount of bacteria in each juice. Uh, uh, we have uh, over 50 different kind of uh, chosen samples of the monkey eye. And uh, by metagenomic sequencing, again, we can sequence what kind of bacteria here in the chosen. And, uh, those bacteria are uh, a little bit different from what we found in the EMP patient, though. So saying uh, monkey may have their own different type of bacteria that trigger uh, or live in the chosen. And uh, we have to come back to the patient, the AMD patient. Uh, as we uh, previously showed, we actually identify uh, about 14 different uh, bacteria that enrich in AMD patients' aqueous humor. This is the only sample we can get. Uh, uh, and uh, this is comparing to the cat rat patient uh, aqueous humor samples. Basically, uh, those are uh, bacillus, those bacteria actually are bacillus major, uh, bacillus formis, bacillus macarum. And next, we want to know if those bacteria are also in the renal tissues uh, of AMD patients. So we got those uh, archived slides, uh, histology uh, slides actually from uh, NEI, and uh, uh, we micro out soft chosen versus hard chosen and chosen tissues and compare the DNA existence if those bacteria are in the random tissues. Among those bacteria, only the bacillus mycterum can be detected. Actually, and it's enriched in the subfusion only, but not other tissues. So uh, we also uh, try to see if bacillus mycterum in Aqueous humor and also plasma of AMD patient, also the, the FICO sample of those AMD patients. Actually, our results do show AMD patient has more bacillus mycarum RNA that can be detected in their plasma and uh, FICO samples, uh, similar as uh, elevated uh, level of uh, bacteria in the aqueous humor samples. Although we don't know the route where those bacteria travel or go through those specimens, but uh, there could be a gut to the blood, and to the, uh, the eye sort of route. Uh, of course, we need more study later to confirm this hypothesis. And now Bacillus mycterium is our target, and uh, it's in the soft chosen, but is that going to be the cause of the uh, chosen or inflammation? C is our next question. So uh, first of all, we did the ARP-19 cell culture and see if Bacillus mycterium can induce uh, a cell uh, morphology change or even cell deaths. But definitely in our 24-hour culture or 48-hour culture, we see Bacillus mycterium inspector can definitely induce uh, RP cell deaths by the pyroptosis pathway. And uh, we also tried an uh, intraocular uh, injection, the IVT uh, intravitreous injection, actually, of uh, bacteria uh, uh, using different uh, bacteria as a model. One important uh, discovery that we saw here is that if we inject 1,000 PMS to the monkey eye, and uh, frankly, we don't see much of intraocular inflammation at all. The uh, uh, vision form is very similar. We didn't see much of intraocular inflammation. And actually, when we go back to the uh, uh, aqueous humor by uh, three days, the bacteria still live inside of us. And uh, they live there, but uh, they didn't cause any uh, inflammation. This is amazing, of course, uh, to us, because uh, this is one important evidence that live bacteria can live in the eye without really 
interrupting the, the balance of the uh, intraoperative immunity. But uh, bacillus mycterium definitely did a different thing, quite different, because 1,000 bacillus mycterium definitely cause a damaging, even a very dominant in the response in the uh, Even the protein of bacillus mycterium, which is that your body, sonicated gas, uh, basically can induce some, uh, some level of uh, intraocrine inflammation, not as in, uh, severe as uh, live bacteria, but again, they are uh, very much inducing intraocular inflammation. So this is saying that actually the bacteria do uh, different things, different bacteria definitely induce different immune response inside of the body especially some bacteria could induce much more intraocular inflammation. And this inflammation is marked by the complement uh, activation, for example, C5A elevation, CFH expression uh, increase, and also induce L1 beta L18 uh, inside of the eye. This is a uh, intraocular uh, detection of those side eye factors. So uh, apparently the immune response induced by the system and paramount correlated with the elevation of those important uh, immune mediators. But uh, although inside the IVT model, definitely it's an inflammation model, uh, but also it's, it could be an actually infection model. Uh, the important thing we next do is to modeling the chosen process chosen development process by uh, injecting uh, the bacillus mycterium bacteria in, uh, in the subretinal space. And uh, after injection, after uh, 35 days, uh, injection uh, could really lead to the degeneration of uh, retinal tissues. Here, the reason we call it noi or the chosen like is that uh, the pathology type uh, the bacteria still can be de detected under uh, on the level of uh, RBE cells and also the bacillus mycterium induced chosen noise type of uh, pathology on OCT is very very similar to what we found on uh, the special uh, spontaneous children we found in monkey both are monkey model so basically this is saying that the bacillus mycterium could be one of the inducer chosen in the animal, also uh, probably in the AMD patient. And this uh, model actually associated with the uh, complement activation exactly as what we found in the dry AMD patient tissue sample, where you see the max complement activation is like we found in the bacteria bacillus mycterium induced complement activation in the retinal level. So uh, in summary, we found the bacteria and in the AMB intraocular space, and we use the bacteria we found uh, generate a model in the monkey where it's very much mimicking the RP uh, type of damage of mimicking the chosen type of immune response. So uh, this is why we summarize our uh, AMD model, a uh, pathogenesis model as a bacteria-induced local inflammation model. Uh, but how we distinguish heart chosen and soft chosen is a key question because uh, some bacteria actually came in to the subretinal level Above RP, uh, uh, be, be, below RP, but above uh, brush membrane. Basically, those in the case of heart chosen, uh, where it come and goes in, in our body, uh, basically, those bacteria probably can be controlled by our immune response. So, uh, bacteria here, an immune response activated and uh, completely resolved the bacteria induced everything. And then the heart chosen come in and goes and disappear. But in some case, for example, in the case of CS mycterium came in, coming in, where the immune response is not efficient enough or 
the bacteria live in the lipid uh, coverage of the Drusen type of uh, uh, tissue, uh, patholo pathologic tissue. Basically, uh, the bacteria cannot be resolved by the immune response. So then the immune response could be expanded, uh, damaging the local tissue. And if the immune response is required, uh, it's big enough, probably uh, neovascularization could happen because the, the uh, immune cells could, should be or need to be mobilized into the local environment uh, in order to resolve the uh, invasion. So basically, this is how we hypothesize the onset of the early AMP. Uh, and uh, of course, later on, uh, there are much more process involved in this uh, resolving and uh, completing the uh, immune attack. But this is an early AMD model that, in our mind, uh, could, what, could be what happens. Uh, our study is, uh, uh, is done by uh, a couple of uh, important, very uh, smart uh, postdoc and students. Also, we collaborate uh, globally with uh, people in more fields like uh, Richard Lee and uh, also in Prince, uh, Dr. Herping Xu, and the NEI uh, with uh, Dr. Qi Xiao Chen, and also our local uh, doctors and scientists. Thank you very much.